The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected woman, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. Surviving BYU. My junior year of high school, I had a couple people tell me about a camp at BYU called SOAR, Summer of Academic Refinement, and I, I didn't think anything of it, I ignored it. And a couple more people told me about it, and I finally looked into it. And I was like, okay, cool, BYU, it's cool, but this is just gonna be a vacation. I'm just going up there to see the mountains, that's it. And I came to SOAR and it literally changed my life. Like, SOAR was the best week ever. I met all these people, I saw all these brown kids around. And I just had a ball and I was like, this is the school I'm coming to, it's the best school ever. So I went back home and I applied to BYU and I applied to maybe two other Texas schools and that was it. So I got into BYU and I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be my dream come true. I'm gonna have the best college experience ever. And I got up here and boy was I shocked, okay? <laughs> But I did have a, a lot of helping hands getting me here to BYU, whether it was flights or people just encouraging me or, you know, I accidentally missed the deadline and they extended it. So I did have a lot of helping hands getting here. Um, and when I did get here, BYU was not like sore at all. Okay. I didn't see not one brown person. There are multiple reasons I was able to survive BYU. And the top reason was prayer. I had family praying for me, I had friends praying for me, I was even praying for myself. There was one point in my sophomore year, I decided to transfer um, from BYU. I, I had applied to some schools back home, I got accepted, I was registering for classes, I didn't apply for any scholarships here at BYU, I didn't choose housing, I didn't get my endorsement renewed, I didn't do anything to prepare to come to BYU the next year. I completely was done. And one day I was packing up, it was a couple days before I left, I was packing up and I looked outside of my window and the day was similar, kind of like the one today. It was bright, sunny, and I heard God tell me, you need to be here. After that, I broke down crying because I didn't want to stay. So my mom always taught us to follow God's plan for our life. So I broke down and I finally just accepted that I have to, I have to be here for another two years. Once I broke down, I began to panic because I realized I didn't have anything set up and I was about to leave to go home in a couple days. I remember grabbing my friend Mike and dragged him across campus with me and I pleaded with my advisors, I pleaded with bishops, I pleaded with, with housing. At the end of that day, running from office to office, I was able to keep my scholarships, I was able to find housing, and I was able to get my endorsement from a bishop that I had never met in my life. And I knew that that was God's hand in helping me stay here. So deciding to stay here was a struggle and I decided to cope with it by telling my own story. I made videos, I wanted people to know that being here at BYU, no matter how great of a school it is, is hard for black people. Especially a black woman who refuses to shut her mouth. So um, I made these videos, I told my story, I got you know backlash here and there, but it was mostly support. And it was able to help start conversations on campus to make this campus is better for everyone. My last semester at BYU had to be the toughest. I experienced grief, I experienced betrayal, and I experienced heartbreak. I was betrayed by multiple people that were close to me, and I think the greatest lesson that I had to learn through those betrayals is that everyone you start the race with, you're not gonna finish with. And although it was hard, I still overcame. I finished my semester strong. I walked across that stage. I have found community here, I have found support here, and I love every single person that I have formed these relationships with. Now that I'm leaving BYU, I feel humbled. I feel grateful for the experiences that I've had here. They have grown me into the person I am today. Being here, I know that I wanted to leave a legacy and I wanted to leave something for future black students at this school. I want them to be motivated. I wanted them to know that through it all, no matter how hard it is, because there are many of nights where I laid out and I just cried. No matter what, you can do it, because I did. You are not alone. There are people here who will help you. Even though I'm going home, I still will be a resource for the students that are on this campus, and I will do everything I can to help them get to where I am today. For the future minority students who are coming to BYU, just stay resilient push forward and never give up. 
You are not alone. There are people here that will help you. All you have to do is reach out your hand. Ooh, the marathon continues. <laughs> My name is Janisha and I am BYU. You want to argue. <laughs> I can't argue with you. I'm happy. Leave me alone. You ain't nobody. Man. <laughs>